Hi guys, uh, this will be a course on fractals and application uh, to the industry and uh, this uh, course is mostly based on the, uh, there is a course uh, developed for the Yale University by the, in fact the father of the fractals uh, course, uh, Benoit Mendelbrot and Michael Frame. So, they designed this course for fractals and uh, most of the things which I will be teaching it is based on that particular course only. Uh, so, uh, what are fractals? That is what uh, we want to learn in this course and we will learn uh, simultaneously several other things also. Uh, first of all, what uh, I want to start with uh, that uh, the basic geometry. Everybody knows about geometry. We have all learned about geometry in our childhood. Uh, whenever we started learning mathematics, we all learned about geometry. Uh, basically, ge geometry is developed as a collection of tools for understanding the shapes of nature. That is what uh, the scientists did when they started geometry. So, they, it, they started to uh, they started to try to understand the shapes of nature, river shapes, mountain shapes. So, when they saw mountain, they saw okay, it is a triangle we will like to say and uh, they, they saw something spherical, so they designed a sphere. So, geometry was a very basic mathematics and fractal is basically, it is, uh, it, it, it was developed from geometry. So, and in geometry, the symmetry is uh, one of the foremost thing which has been recognized as a principle in geometry. We all know things are symmetric and nature usually is symmetric, but uh, in, by symmetry we usually understand that something is symmetric uh, like if something is like that a mirror image, but uh, symmetry is not always like that. Uh, symmetry has much more uh, uh, meaning than that. So, we will first review familiar forms of symmetry, then we will also uh, show that the fact is the word which we are using today in this course, uh, it reveals a new kind of symmetry. It is a totally new kind of symmetry which is uh, called symmetry under magnification. So, uh, many shapes which uh, looks quite complicated initially and initially you will say oh this is not symmetric at all, but sometimes it, uh, it, it reveals an, a simplicity, uh, underlying simplicity when we see it from the point of view of symmetry under magnification. So, that is what uh, we will uh, learn in this uh, course also. So, first of all we review some familiar symmetries which we all know till now uh, in nature. The symmetry under translation, symmetry under reflection and symmetry under rotation. So, uh, these three forms of symmetry we are all familiar with. And we, uh, and we see that this is this kind of symmetries are exhibited in many uh, natural and manufactured situations of course, uh, but mostly in natural phenomena we see these common type of symmetries. Uh, these symmetries are uh, translational, so that means if something is translated it uh, remains symmetric. Uh, if it translated laterally or vertically it remains symmetric, you will see a similar pattern uh, when you translate the things. Then Another symmetry is reflection symmetry, which uh, all of us are aware that we are all uh, almost symmetric, human beings are symmetric, a flower is symmetric and most of the things uh, you see in nature, you will find they are symmetric. Uh, uh. And then the third kind of symmetry which, are, which we are familiar with is uh, the rotational symmetry. So, things you rotate, they remain same. So, it is a, uh, you, the, the, the rotation does not affect the shape of the uh, feature the object. So, that is called a ro rotational symmetry. In fractals, we will learn about a new kind of symmetry which is less familiar to us uh, until now. So, which is called symmetry under magnification. What does it mean? That means, uh, things are symmetric when you magnify them and magnification means both either zooming in or zooming out. So, uh, that is that is why it is called symmetry under magnification. So, what does that mean? That zooming in on an object leaves the shape approximately unaltered. What, what does that mean? That means, that if you zoom in into some object or zoom out of an object, the shape will remain same. It, it will look like uh, exactly same. Uh, the example I can give you, a, everybody has seen, seen a cauliflower. A cauliflower, you see a smaller piece of cauliflower or a bigger piece of cauliflower. If you take a close up photograph of both the pieces, you will not be able to differentiate which one is bigger, which one is smaller because the shape remains uh, exactly the same. So, uh, other than the symmetries in this course, we will also introduce 
uh, some basic geometry of fractals uh, with and we also emphasize on the iterated function systems uh, which is the which will be the backbone of this course the iterated function systems uh, and how do we generate fractals using this iterated function systems or in short we call it IFS. Also we will also explore the application of IFS to detect patterns in nature how uh, nature behaves and can we uh, really predict something or detect patterns using the iterated function system and we will also see example of not only architectural fractals, but also some engineering applications, some geological applications uh, and uh, some geophysical applications, uh, civil engineering applications, electrical engineering applications, in fact everywhere fractals have used in all the branches of sciences and engineering. So, uh, first we will review the family of symmetries of nature, so, so which uh, we will it, it will also prepare us for new kind of symmetry that fractals exhibit. As the basic property of fractals which we usually characterized with uh, the geometric characterization of the simplest fractals is self similarity. What is the meaning of self similarity? I think uh, by the example when I told you that it is symmetric under magnification that automatically means it is self similar. If you break the word self similar that means it is similar to itself. So, that is what symmetry under magnification whether you zoom in or zoom out it will remain same. So, it is similar to itself that is what it is called that is why it is called self similar. So, the shape what does that mean the, the original shape is made up of smaller copies of itself. You make a copy of uh, the object make several copies and ultimately it will return back to the same shape. So, the copies are similar to the whole it has lot of uh, philosophical uh, things also uh, in the course the why copies are similar to the whole. So, same shape, but different sizes. So, usually the shape will remain same, same, but the sizes would uh, uh, differ. So, uh, I will start with the one of the simplest factors which are constructed by iteration. Iteration means uh, if uh, somebody is not familiar with that word, I can tell you that iteration means repeating something again and again that is called iteration, you iterate over things. And, uh, Usually, the complicated pictures of uh, fractals which we uh, usually will see during the course, they are uh, basically created by very simple rules and uh, we, we usually found that nature is very, very simple. Uh, usually, the rules of nature are very simple. Uh, ultimately, it produces a complicated picture, but the basic rules remain same. So, for example, we uh, start with a let us say a filled in triangle. Uh, this is a completely filled triangle. And for every field in triangle, we connect the midpoints of the sides. So, we connect this side, this side and this side and remove the middle triangle. So, it is called the removal of the middle third, right. And then I will iterate this process. How do we iterate? See, we made a rule with every triangle, we uh, join the middle points of those sides and remove the middle third. And since we said with every triangle we will do that, so now we have three field in triangles. So, we will do the same thing with these triangles also. So, that is how uh, we will uh, produce a very complicated picture ultimately, which in the limit when we do infinite times you do the iteration, it is it is called a Sierpinski's gasket. Sierpinski is the name of the scientist who uh, designed it and gasket means, uh, gasket means you uh, gasket uh, is uh, sort of when you put some water in something gasket is had lot of holes in it. So, that is how it is called Sierpinski's gasket. So, that is the limit uh, if you keep on doing the same iteration you will get this kind of picture and if you look at this picture closely see you look at this portion here in this circle if you zoom around it looks like the whole picture again it there is no difference between number 1 and number 2 they are exactly the same uh, things. So, uh, and in fact a smaller part of this also if you look at this portion and you zoom it in it will again look same. It will look at this portion this is also same even this is also same. So, it is uh, in the limit it is uh, all the things will remain same. So, this gasket is we call it gasket is self similar right. Uh, now, we can also describe this gasket in another way and uh, this is 
the forward uh, kind of uh, problem what we did that we created a gasket or we can also say that the gasket the whole gasket is made up of three copies uh, 1, 2 and 3 each are half as tall see they are basically half of the width and half of the length of uh, uh, and half as wide as the original. So, from the original if you reduce half by half in both the direction x and y direction it will produce uh, let us say this picture this is half as half as tall and half as wide. Similarly, so we have three copies of such three triangles which are original. So, that is a consequence of self similarity that each of these copies are also made up of see the, if the if I concentrate on this one I have number 3 I can say this is also made up of three copies which are half as tall as the original and half as wide as the original. So, each of these copies is made up of three still smaller copies. So, we can say that gas gasket is made up of 9 copies of each 1 by 4 by 1 by 4 see 9 copies 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. So, 9 or I can say 27 of such copies where each of them is 1 by 8 to 1 by 8 of its size. So, usually but we prefer the simpler description that means we will stick to this description. So, 3 copies each half as tall and half as wide. So, uh, what does this imply? The a new word is coined here that we, we say that fractals possess a scale invariance. Now, what is the meaning of scale invariance? Scale means magnification, zooming in or zooming out. You change the scale of things. Earlier it was let us say the 2 inches, now I am saying uh, seeing it on the zoomed part or larger part and so on. So, over the scale my picture is invariant, it does not change. So, it is called a scale invariance property. Now, I will give you some more examples of uh, self similarity. Uh, so, uh, as we saw earlier that the gasket is made of 3 copies of itself each scale by half and 2 copies translated version. If, if you see I have the translated version of each one this is translated here and this is here. So, I can also say this is a translated version of that. So, when 2 copies translated with slightly more uh, I will not say complicated, but a more uh, difficult rules. We can build factors that are a very reasonable approximation to natural objects. Like suppose I say I want to produce a tree using factor uh, equations. Can I do that? Yes, I can with a little bit more complicated rules uh, and a good approximation of trees. Uh, so that's what uh, we will learn in this course also. We will find the rules to make these fractals. Uh, for now, uh, we'll just. Uh, see the factor decomposition of objects and we try to find a smaller copies of each shape within the shape. And as I told you that you can produce this kind of shapes also uh, the tree I can produce and probably I will do that in the next lecture. Uh, the trunk is a little bit harder part, but other part you can also in fact uh, guess that these are self similar things is not it. And each of these part also has similar things. So, we can do that, but uh, let us see, uh, we will uh, go on in this course. The most uh, amazing and most uh, complicated, I would not say most complex picture of the fractals is called the Mandelbrot set. Mandel, Bernard Mandelbrot is the guy who in fact first thought about fractals in 1970s somewhere. Uh, so, uh, there is a different kind of nonlinear transformation. It is the most famous of all fractals and because of this fractals only the fractals became popular. And it, this picture which is a very complicated picture it is produced by a very simple equation which is known as let us say z n plus 1 equals z n square plus c where all these are complex numbers. And, and n plus 1 n subscript means the next iteration of this. So, z n is the current value of this parameter, c is also a parameter which is a, let us say this is a uh, and if you square it and add it to c this will give me the new value of z and then I will re do the same thing. So, I will keep on changing these things and then there are some rules which will produce such a complicated picture. In fact, this uh, set is called to be one of the most complex uh, mathematical set uh, which exists in nature. 
uh, uh, but it is produced by a, one of the most simple equations. So that is the beauty of Mandelbrot uh, set which we will uh, learn a little bit later. I just rotated this uh, set here uh, by 90 degrees and if you so but that rotation brings you sort of a some sort of a philosophical questions. Uh, it looks like a human being in some sort of a sitting on a some pose. Uh, some people call it a Buddha, uh, uh, Buddha brought. Uh, so, people see some, somebody meditating or something. Okay, uh, I will not go into very details in this course, and uh, that is a philosophical thing. Uh, yeah, fractal landscapes. I will show you some pictures in next uh, couple of minutes, which uh, will look like as if they are the real photographs taken, but they are produced by simple equations. So, uh, and with the since uh, now in our computers, we have quite more sophistication in computing power. So, now Fractals can produce a realistic forgery of realistic uh, scenes. In fact, a uh, lot of movies these days they use fractal backgrounds in their uh, pictures when they cannot travel to these exotic places. They produce fractal th these pictures right in their studio. Like uh, this picture, this is a, this is a sort of a dawn uh, or dusk scene uh, somewhere. These are mountains. They are also produced by uh, equations and this is uh, a very nice uh, picture. This is also produced by uh, uh, simple uh, fractal equations uh, or the complex, uh, not very complex equation. And making these realistic looking landscapes is quite difficult. It is not as straightforward as I told you in the last slide that z equals z square plus c. But yes, through some uh, more work, uh, we people do produce these uh, pictures. Uh, and uh, the, the advantage is that a image file or a video file here may take several gigabytes of space, but you can store the equation in few kilobytes and then uh, so that is the advantage. So, doing this it can be stored in a small files is, uh, uh, is a, a remarkable thing. Now, we will see some of the uh, natural fractals. Uh, so, if you have already looked at so many geometrical and computer generated examples. So, I will also give you uh, some glimpses of examples from uh, nature, the realistic examples. The, these kind of patterns on uh, rocks, if uh, you happen to be a geologist, you must have seen this. These are called dendrites, dendritic patterns. And so, these are produced by nature, purely by nature. And if you look at it closely, see uh, this whole pattern, if you see this pattern also is similar or this pattern is also similar. So, if you zoom in on, onto this object, they will remain same. So, it is self similar and is scale invariant. So, this uh, constitutes a fractal. Trees, trees we have already discussed. Trees are also, if you look at the branches of the tree, if I, if you, if you see the whole portion, it looks like a tree. But if I just show you this portion, and if you just concentrate this portion, this will also look like an independent tree. Or I look at this portion, this is also true, this is also true. So, a tree is also a self similar object and a scale invariant. Uh, this is again I take an example of uh, geology, stagnatonite or what uh, something we, uh, yeah, that we call. This is also a fractal object. A smaller portion will also look like a bigger portion or a bigger portion would look like a smaller portion. So, zooming in does not change the object. Uh, if you if you look at the the picture of Jupiter, this is a picture of Jupiter, and the tornadoes. You know there is a permanent storm on Jupiter. These are the picture of that storm. And if you look at any any portion, you just concentrate. This looks like some type of sort of chaotic picture. If you concentrate on a smaller picture, that is also uh, similar, or a smaller one, this is also similar. So these are mainly. Uh, fractals which exist in nature and uh, one can find these fractals uh, on their own also. You will see uh, in da your daily life you can very easily see these uh, fractals. So, but one thing is uh, different which uh, you must keep in mind as a student in fractal that fractals found in nature are a uh, little bit different from the theoretical fractals. So, from the first like couple of examples we saw Sierpinski's gasket and other example, they differ in two important ways. Number one, the self-similarity of natural fractals is only approximate. It is not 
exactly self similar like in Sirpeski's gasket you saw those triangles were repeating itself exactly. But in uh, any of the example I like dendrites I sh sh showed you uh, there it will not be exact copy it will be just approximate or in a statistical sense I will say that, okay 70 percent of the picture remains same other picture changes and, uh, and the other thing is number two this self similarity extends over a limited range of scales what does that mean? In Sierpinski gasket or a mathematical factor it goes up to infinite level whether you zoom in or out infinite times it does not really matter. But in nature if you zoom in maybe 2, 4 times, 8 times it will then break its symmetry. So, it is only a limited range of scales right. So, it, it is uh, th th those are the basic two differences between a natural factor and a mathematical factor. So, if, if I want to understand the first point that why does it happen? why it is only approximate or statistical. See in nature see when I am uh, producing a factor through a mathematical equation I am using one equation single equation, but in nature there are several things involved it is a complex phenomenon nature is not so simple uh, it is simple, but not so simple. So, <laughs> so it is, you have to know that many forces work together in nature and they grow natural factors. So, many forces means many different rules are involved. So, that is why it is very difficult to uh, uh, model the nature exactly in that sense while mathematical factors are built by a single process. So, that is one of the reasons that the natural factors are approximate only or statistical. For the second point why it is only a limited range of scales again the forces which are producing the natural objects the, the forces which are responsible for this natural factor structure they are effective over only a limited ranges of distances why right? look at the forces there you have nuclear forces gravity force. So, gravity force will not work exactly the same level or what the forces between a neutron and proton would be totally different than the gravity between two different uh, 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 objects. So, they are already limited on a limited ra range of distances. So, that is why it is obvious that the self similarity will extend over only a limited range of scales. So, the waves carving a fractal coastline yeah coastlines I have not used an example yet, but I would be using the coastlines or the coast the sea coast is also a fractal uh, picture, but the waves uh, or the, the forces which are producing that coastline is totally different from the forces holding together the atoms of the coastline. So, scales at, at micro scale and a macro scale things are very different. So, that is why they are only limited on the uh, few uh, levels only. So, uh, if I want to guarantee the self similarity to for a, a shape. So, how do you guarantee that I want to build a shape by applying the same process over the smaller and smaller scales. So, the, the we can also produce factors from another idea which we can say like in Sierpinski's gasket we said removal of the middle third triangle, but I can also uh, say the same thing through the use of initiators and generators. How? The initiator is the starting shape I will say I will start with a triangle this is the initiator and what is the generator from this triangle I will make this picture using the same triangles one triangle, two triangle and three triangle. So, this is a generator now I will repeat the process from this initiator and uh, this generator say whole picture I will do the same thing this is again a triangle. So, I'll, uh, uh, I will use another of this kind one. So, that will produce a larger picture. So, initiator and generator. So, the, what is the rule? In the generator replace each copy of the initiator with a scaled copy of the generator uh, and if I want to change the orientation sometimes I can change the orientations also. In this case I have uh, kept the orientations exactly same. So, the Sierpinski's gasket also uh, can be produced this way as I already told you from this picture that how do we turn connect the midpoints and remove the middle triangle into initiators and generators uh, that is the idea. The initiator is the filled in triangle and generator is this shape and uh, we keep on doing things. Another kind of very popular fractal is something which we call Koch curve it is a Koch is the name of a German scientist. So, uh, this is also produced by a very simple uh, uh, rule which is called tens upon tens upon tens what does that mean? Uh, that means, we start with a line this is a line right and from this line we produce this picture sort of a tent 
Uh, that means, we divide the point uh, line in three equal parts from the middle part we remove this part and replace it by a hat or a tent. So, that is why it is called tent upon tents upon tents and now I have the same rule for with each line I will do the same thing. So, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line and this is a line. I have four lines here with this I will produce uh, let us say this then this it is not a very good picture, but you can and I will show you the picture in a moment. So, this kind of picture I will show you the exact picture. So, this is how this cock curve is being generated. So, the construction is very simple the cock curve has some very peculiar properties which we will discuss later in the course. So, which are basically counterintuitive it does not really uh, the one thing which is counterintuitive is the dimension of this particular uh, curve it will be 1 point something which is mind boggling in the beginning. We are all familiar with one dimensional object, two dimensional or three dimensional, but then we do have to understand if I want to study factors, I do have to understand what is 1.3 dimensional object. So, that is what we will uh, see and we will also see this cock curve very interesting thing. This is infinitely long curve and within a short area length is infinite of this curve, but the area is finite. Similarly, we will see factors where uh, volume will be finite, but area is infinite. Uh, infinite means very large like one of the example I can give you the human lungs. Human lungs people say that it has an area of a let us say football field. So, very large area confined in a very small volume we have a lung of uh, this size probably right. So, that is also a factor. Uh, so, that is also we will learn. So, uh, we shall see that it is infinitely long and every piece of it in fact is infinite long. If I concentrate on this piece this is this also has infinite length, this also has infinite length even this also has infinite length we will learn that a little later. Then uh, a very famous uh, factor is called Cantorset. In fact, Cantorset was uh, discovered about I think 200 years back uh, by George Cantor, uh, but that time he did not know that it is a factor. He uh, devised the definition of the Cantorset, but without realizing that this is he is producing a fractal. So, fra this is the simplest of uh, one dimensional fractal where you just take a line and take this part and remove this part uh, this line will become like that and then repeat the process over the whole thing I uh, will uh, show you in a moment. So, it is basically cut all the turns out of the cock curve and we are left with something that appears to be little more than holes like this is the initiator and this is the generator and we you in by repeating it this see this this is uh, ultimately this curve will de uh, deduce to this kind of thing and in the limit this will be just be a bunch of dots. So, basically it has uh, zero length it does not have any length. So, it is a zero length uh, curve. So, that is a picture of Cantor set uh, result of a level of single pixels. So, on a computer screen I cannot go more than that. So, that is the best I can do. So, so much has been removed uh, from the Cantor set that the set itself is hardly present it is not there at all. So, we shall find this fact in many mathematical uh, uh, applications and physical application even in literature In literature also you find Cantor set application which we will see later in the course. And as I gave you the example of lungs, lungs are fractals. This is a picture of true lung. In fact, it's not a. Uh, and uh, you will see all the branches are sub branches are basically self similar. And because of this branching and sub branching, the area of the lungs becomes so large, and this is confined in a very small uh, volume. So that is one of the example. Another example I'll give you from uh, uh, mathematics. Uh, all of you must have studied about the Newton's method of finding roots of equation right. So, this is uh, uh, this picture is roots of, uh, of a cubic where you have three roots for a cubic you will find three roots and these three roots either will lie here, here or here. So, and uh, uh, the, the, the roots by which they are governed if you star, start here then you will find that root, if you start here you will find another root, if you start here it will find another root, but suppose you start here 
and you iterate on Newton's uh, method, then you may find this root also. So, that those are the uh, little bit peculiarities which we will see later in the course how this picture was produced using the, uh, the cubic equation in Newton's rule. I think I will stop here today and that will be better. Okay, thank you.